<laughs> All right, so I um, wanted to go over a, a new washing method I just put together literally last night, uh, Sunday night. I went to Walmart and picked up the supplies. I've been thinking about it all weekend. It was the first chance I got to I had to come back to the office. So um, I got to test it for my first time today. It worked great. And I'll put together some of the clips that I have from the actual process. Uh, but first, I just want to show you how it works. So if you come in here, um, here is the Moonray S printer. And I finished a print, um, an ortho patient coming in tomorrow for aligners. So uh, I have set up the print um, so that uh, I've got four lowers, four uppers. Uh, this is a new patient or a new a start, so I have the initials. We can put buttons on and three treatments. I usually do three treatment at a time. Um, so uh, four upper, four lower is the routine for the initial. So anyway, fit the models on. And one of the problems is typically now you got this wet resin and you need to pop them off. It's a bit of a mess. It's not a big deal, but it's kind of annoying popping them off when they're all slippery, slimy into the um, alcohol bath. Um, and so Form Labs actually recently put out their wash, um, the wash and cure tanks, whatever. And it's, it's a really cool uh, concept. It's a bit pricey in my mind, um, you know, six hundred dollars for one and five hundred for the cure station or whichever. So, um, you know, the way I usually work, I try to figure out a different way of doing things, and this seems to be the trick for me. So, um, here are these little tubs right here. Uh, you get a three pack from Walmart for about two bucks. Um, so I took the three lids. If you want to come over here, I cut a hole in there. I just traced it once, and then I just use that as a pattern to trace the three of them. I can take the entire thing, set this, it's a little bit tight, nestles right in there. This is my little um, uh, mix, uh, uh, magnetic mixer. And I can let that go. Now, one thing that's important to note is I try to keep the alcohol right up to the bottom of the, um, of the print bed. And it is pretty much up there. I might add just a touch more. I had a little slosh, so a little bit came out. Um, and you don't want it to be too high because if it does, that's too much interruption of flow. But it works really well. In about 10 minutes, I'll take it out and pretty much all the resin is off. In fact, I did a second wash after it of my last build. And the same exact number. It was a different patient, but the same eight uh, models on there. And this was after running it. Um, there's effectively you know, no color distortion in that alcohol, which tells me that most all of the resin got cleaned off. I never run a brush across it, ran nothing. Um, so this setup, I think the, the magnetic spinner is about 60 bucks on eBay. These are about two bucks. I would suggest getting extras because I cut a hole in three of them. That got me the height that I wanted. You could do four or five even more if you wanted. Um, but uh, then you don't have any lids. So I, um, uh, we got a few more, that way we have some lids that I can set on top of there as far as alcohol and whatnot, just the fumes. And then I have um, three different baths, one for um, surgical guide material, one for gray, and one for as a final wash. And I'll probably add as I continue to um, use different materials. But anyway, hopefully that would be a cool trick for some people. I'm going to put some links to where to buy it. Unfortunately, Walmart's the only, I can't find them online, um, like on Amazon. These aren't special if you can find something that's similarly deep and you want the height and wide enough that you can fit this entire print bed on it, that's what's important. And so again, two bucks at Walmart. Um, I, we, we got three kits of them, so six bucks and um, the $60 uh, stirrer. Um, all right, hope that helps. Okay, so I wanted to make one extra note I forgot about. Uh, when, I, when you buy these containers, they have a little nub in the bottom, which is you know pretty common for um, Tupperware and whatnot. So uh, this little nub gets pretty obnoxious as the magnetic beam sort of spins around and hits that. It gets actually really loud. If you listen to this, I've shaved this off. Okay, it's loud enough to know that it's running because you're not going to forget it necessarily, but it's it's pretty quiet. No one's really been annoyed by that. Um, so to do it, I really just took my lab hand piece. Put a, I, all I had was a round pineapple available, and I just ground it off, essentially. Took a minute and just made it somewhat smooth. Nothing picky there, just trying to make it a little less obnoxious. So if you're going to have three, four, however many containers that are going to be 
being spun on, I would go ahead and do that before you add any alcohol. That way you don't have to realize after the fact that it's pretty loud and annoying. Anyway, quick little addition. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and uh, we're going to go ahead and check to see what it looks like. Turn that off, get this open and ready to transfer over to. Um, I find it easiest just to grab the entire um, blue thing. I, I considered initially at cutting three more of them, of the lids. That way I could um, you know, take it out and put it in the other, but that's actually more work than it's worth. It's pretty simple just to pop this off, turn it over. You can see that it's pretty well cleaned off already, actually. I mean, and so now I'll just turn this whole thing over, attach it to this one. Okay, looks good. And you can see how clear that alcohol is right now. Set this one aside. Go ahead and cover this up. And you'll hear the noise because this is one I haven't adjusted. I haven't smoothed that little part off. And you'll hear how much louder it is. So it's not the end of the world loud, but it is annoying. Um, the, also, the other thing is, is that little bump in there can cause it to, the beam to flip around if it gets too fast and too much of a disruption. Not likely, but anyways, just save yourself the trouble, shave that little, that little lump off, and you should be good to go. Um, all right, thanks. Okay, so we're all set. I'm gonna turn this off. Turn that speed down so it's ready for next time. And so I'm going to go ahead and take the whole uh, build platform out of my hole. There we go. Probably going to open that hole up a little bit. And here's my handy dandy little removal device. Very sharp, very dangerous. But anyway, you can see the models. Um, there is no excess resin and you can wipe on the teeth and you won't see any sort of change in um, surface finish because there is no excess resin. So, and they just kind of, now this part of the video is more just talking about how the build is set up and I mean I've gone over that in other videos um, for how to set up your prints so that they stack like this with the little build platforms. Um, you can go look for those videos as well if you'd like. And in fact, the platform itself is something I created and shared on Thingiverse. And there's a free online community for sharing three-dimensional 3D files, SDLs. There we go. So we've got a nice clear build platform. I always do that just to make sure there's nothing left on it. And I can go ahead and put that back in the printer in just a moment. But for now, I when I do models, not everyone cures them. You're not going to the mouth, so maybe you don't have to, but just out of habit, I do anyways. So to cure them, I set them on their base. And I can fit pretty comfortably uh, eight models in this. This is a... Um, a 50 watt um, uh, nail curing bed. You can find it on Amazon uh, for I think around 50 bucks. And, let's get these. and I'll leave these in here. There we go. And it has a time setting of two, three, five minutes, or the first push is just uh, indefinite. So let that cure 10 minutes, and then they're ready to suck down for aligners. Um, just like these. Alright, that's it. Thanks.